Today on Comic Misconceptions, we're going to talk about Optimus Prime's addiction to getting himself killed. Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, the show that takes you into detail about the things you think you know about comics. I'm your host, Scott Nicewander, and I know we've been off for like three weeks, I think, but we've been getting things set up like this new studio type area here. I think it looks pretty nifty. We've also been working on our Kickstarter to launch the second season of the Nerd Sync podcast. More information about that at the end of this episode, but right now, we are going to be talking about comics. So we're going to start to do things a little bit differently here at Comic Misconceptions. You know, previous episodes would be me talking about a random subject and then having a random trivia question at the end that didn't really have anything to do with each other. But now, I want to kind of connect them a little bit. So, starting from this episode and further onward, the previous episode's trivia question will be the topic for the following episode. For example, last week I asked you guys, if you could put Optimus Prime's consciousness on your computer hard drive, how much space would he take up? Battle or something similar to that, on YouTube said no more than 1.2 megabytes that is correct which leads us to today's topic the time that optimus prime died and was brought back using a floppy disk so it's the time-honored tale of autobots versus decepticons in an all-out war for some reason or another but ethan zachary suggests an alternative he says he wants to upload the autobots and decepticons into a video game so that there won't be any real world consequences for their destructive actions against each other except for the fact that both optimus prime and megatron are wired with explosives so the loser gets blown up that's a that's a real world consequence. But it wasn't an automatic blowing up of sorts. No, Ethan had two joysticks. One of them would destroy Optimus Prime and the other would destroy Megatron. Now these explosives and the way it works, that was Megatron's suggestion. And it's not really every day when you get a powerful villain that you've been trying to destroy, willingly hooking himself up with explosives and handing you the trigger. Just blow him up. That would solve so many problems. Blow that sucker to kingdom come and life would be fine. But no, Optimus Prime and his morals won't allow for that. So instead, we enter the video game for some, you know, violence. So inside the game, Megatron uses a cheat code to destroy most of the Autobots, except for Optimus Prime, who ends up winning anyway because he throws Megatron off of a cliff. But in doing so, he accidentally killed NPCs, non playable characters that do not exist outside of the game. They are not living creatures that were put in the game, they are just there and he killed them accidentally. So, according to Optimus Prime, he lost and Megatron won. So he demanded Ethan to blow him up instead of Megatron. Okay, hold on. That's like killing yourself because you had to take out a couple pawns to get to your opponent's king. Or that's like killing yourself because you had to uh, take out the putty patrol to get to Goldar. That's like killing yourself because you had to destroy your opponent's duel monsters to attack them directly. Okay, granted, Optimus, you killed people that weren't really directly working with Megatron, but they weren't real. They don't exist in reality. They were just in the way of you accomplishing your goal of destroying the main villain, Megatron. I mean, who here hasn't played a video game where they accidentally killed a couple civilians? Or, you know, purposely killed a couple civilians. But nonetheless, Optimus is blown up at his demand. But later, Ethan reveals that he has a copy of Optimus Prime's consciousness on a floppy disk. One floppy disk one megabyte. This video is at least a thousand times bigger than Optimus Prime's entire consciousness. So, I guess that's something to think about. So you'd think it would be as simple as taking the floppy disk, inserting it into Optimus Prime's old body, doing a couple repairs, and we'd be good to go. Unfortunately, the Autobots kind of shot 
Optimus Prime's body into space, as friends do on occasion. I mean, you can't really blame them. I don't think there was a cemetery that would bury a, you know, a truck, but either way, they now had to create Optimus Prime from scratch and then upload his memories, and they did, and, uh, you know, everything was fine as could ever be, right? Wrong. He died almost instantly after he was resurrected. But you know what they say, lather, rinse, repeat. They built him a new, new body. New, new. And shoved his memories into there, and everything was hunky-dory until he died many, many, many times after this. He has just an addiction to dying. Like, it's not healthy. But I guess if there's one thing we can count on, it's Optimus sacrificing himself for seemingly no reason. And I guess we all do need something to believe in, so... There you go. Robot death. But you know what will never die? Segway, the weekly trivia challenge. So I've got a fun one for you guys today, and like I said at the beginning, this week's question will determine next week's episode. So let's talk about superheroes. More specifically, sidekicks. You see, superheroes have a long-standing history with sidekicks. Either they have one currently, or they have had one in the past. Some of them are iconic, and some of them not so much. But we're going to talk about animal sidekicks. You know, we have a great example of animal sidekicks, like Superman's Crypto, or Batman's Ace, the Bat Hound. But today I want to talk about an animal sidekick that is connected to one of my favorite superheroes of all time, Aquaman. So this week's trivia challenge is, what is the name of Aquaman's animal sidekick that is purple, has eight arms, and can play a mean cello? Take a crack at it and leave your answers in the comments below or on our Facebook page. You can even tweet at us at NerdSync using the hashtag CMTrivia. Now I know this one seems a little tricky, but I do believe that you guys can do it. So get started on this week's Trivia Challenge. But that is it for this episode of Comic Misconceptions, you guys. Tell me what you think of this new studio here. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say in the comments below. And please, please check out our Kickstarter. A little desperate there. Uh, please check out our Kickstarter for the NerdSync Podcast Season 2. In case you didn't know, NerdSync had started out as a podcast originally, and it kind of spawned all these different little areas that we're doing right now, including this show, but we really want to go back into the podcast some more. It really opened a lot of doors for us, and it was just a lot of fun. So please help us out with that. We have some great rewards for your generosity, for any sort of money that you donate. I mean, now is the perfect time to get involved with NerdSync. And please do subscribe for more comic misconceptions and other just fun, nerdy stuff that we have on a weekly basis that we're constantly pushing out. Share this video with your friends who also like comic books. And as always, you can like NerdSync Productions on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Scott Nicewander. I changed it a while back, so I apologize for any confusion. But I think that's it. So for Comic Misconceptions, I am Scott Nicewander. We'll see you guys next time. Ethan had saved a copy of Optimus Prime's consciousness onto a floppy disk. The disk drive. Now is not a better time to... Now is not a better time? Not a better... It's not a better time, but it's a time. Later on, Ethan reveals that he had saved a copy of Optimus Prime's consciousness onto a floppy da... Um, a floppy da... A floppy da... Floppy da... Floppy da... Floppy da... Floppy da...